All right, here we go. Brand new Flyers Daily for the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Uh, it is Jason Martinez. Flyers Daily, as always, presented by Ticketmaster. Make more memories live. Flyers will be back coming up tomorrow night when they head to Toronto to take on the Toronto Maple Leafs without Morgan Riley. Five game sus handed down for Morgan Riley for that uh, cross check to the head of Ridley Gregg. At the end of that Senators game the other night, Ridley Gregg goes down to the open net and about three feet away, loads up a bomb and takes a clapper right into the empty net. Morgan Riley took offense and uh, handled the situation wrong. Um, I, I'm i totally fine with Morgan Riley going over and letting Ridley Gregg know that that was over the line. Uh, but you can't cross-check to the head, and he's going to miss five games. It's a big loss for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So the Flyers will be in Toronto uh, tomorrow to take on the Leafs. Then Saturday, it's the Flyers and Devils and the Stadium Series game at MetLife Stadium. Uh, we'll be looking forward to that one as well. We'll have tons of coverage for you uh, for the Stadium Series. Also, Devils right now sitting eight points back of the Flyers. Flyers with 64 points, the Devils with 56. Devils 51 games, Flyers 54 games, Flyers in the third spot in the Metro. They've won four straight games coming out of this all-star break. break. And uh, again, look like a team that's really got it going all of a sudden again. But that, you know, this is part of an 82-game season. You're going to have stretches where you're winning games. Sometimes you're going to have that, like that five-game losing skid where you can't buy a win. Look, you face some tough teams in that five-game skid, Colorado, Tampa, who's playing much better now in the top three in the Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. And with players like Kucherov, McKinnon, Rantanen, and others, uh, they can make you pay. There's also a loss to Ottawa in there, though. Ottawa, not a very good team. There's a 3 nothing loss at Detroit in that five-game skid, and obviously the 6-2 loss against Boston. But since they've been back, they've beaten three out of four teams, are really good teams. When you look at Florida, obviously top five team. You look at Winnipeg. Very good team. Seattle, not as good as those two, but a decent team. And then, but you give up one goal against two games in Florida and Winnipeg. You give up one in each of them. Only two goals against Seattle and then three goals against Arizona. And you come back in the third period with three unanswered goals to win the game. So uh, Flyers running good right now. It's Toronto coming up tomorrow. We're going to hear from former Flyer Jake Voracek in just a second. And we're going to get to some listener emails. But let me give you some context. Jake Voracek was at the game against Arizona. And he is property, actually, right now of the Arizona Coyotes. His contract was traded there from Columbus. Uh, his playing days are over. Uh, Jake Voracek uh, has had a long, very productive NHL career. He's one of those guys that um, I think he's viewed in through one lens. And then you look at his stats and you go, holy, I didn't realize he had those kind of numbers. All said and done, Voracek played in 1,058 NHL regular season games over 15 years. Voracek was drafted all the way back in the 2007 draft, seventh overall in the first round uh, by the Columbus Blue Jackets. Came to Philadelphia three years into his NHL career. He had 44 points, or excuse me, 38 points in his rookie year, 50 points, and then 46 in the first three years for Columbus. Then he came to the Flyers. Uh, at 49 points, 46 points, then boom, he jumps up in 13, 14 to 62 points, then in 81 points in 80, 82 games, 55 and 73, 61 and 82, 85 points in the 17, 18 season in 82 games. All said and done, though, 1,058 games and 806 points. Very productive NHL career for the Flyers in 10 seasons, parts of 10 seasons, 727 games. 177 goals, 427 assists, 604 points. It's a very, very uh, well-done career for Jake Voracek. Now, I know that, you know, he. I, I think he was a misunderstood player. I think that when Jake's game was on, he was as dangerous as they come in the NHL and on those teams. Uh, but he's a guy that, was unfiltered, just raw honesty. And in our world today, 
where a lot of times you go, why are athletes even speaking? They don't, they don't even say anything. It's just all cliches and chalk. And then when an athlete does say something, we say, why are the athletes speaking? Well, Jake Voracek never apologized for any of it. If you asked him a question, you were going to get his honest opinion. It's one of the things I really enjoyed about Jake is that I knew the conversation with him, whether it was in between periods or taping an interview, whatever it was, it was going to be real. And I respect the hell out of him for that. And I think he's a guy that, like I said, is a little misunderstood by some in this town, but make no mistake about it. He was one heck of a hockey player and I think a really good dude. So I had a chance to catch up with Jake at the Flyers Coyotes game and Here's the conversation. Joining us on Flyers Daily. Boy, I'm so happy to talk to you. It's former Flyer, Jake Voracek. Oh, listen to that. That's a, that's a beautiful sound, yes, isn't it's, it? It's, it's the best sound in the world. <laughs> How you know. been? It's been good. It's been, uh, you know, I'm uh, putting up a uh, few pounds, you know. I don't I see it. Got to change my closet a little bit. My shirt doesn't fit mm-hmm. anymore, but uh, it's been good. It's been fine. How's, uh, you know, it been just the last couple of years to, to kind of wrap up your career? I know it's like, it's kind of, a weird time for athletes because you have the rigidity of your career and now all of a sudden you don't. I listen, like I was never too sentimental about that. So, you know, I knew the day was going to come eventually. I actually, I was surprised how, uh, surprised how long it lasted because my head wasn't all right over the last five, six years. So I kind of pushed it as far as I could. And then it's uh, just about a time to, to call it. So, uh, you know, it's there is a different things to life than just hockey. I mean, it's fun time. You miss obviously the boys, the road trips, the locker room, and everything. But the life is not only about hockey, and uh, you know that's the way I approach it. Will you be popping up in beer leagues over in the Czech Republic <laughs> just simply for the beer? <laughs> Probably. No, no. I just uh, you know what? Like it's that. I'm not going to play. I'm just going to hang that, out with you guys. That part of my life is kind of gone as a player. You know, I obviously try to help out the team in Kladno, which uh, which uh, we struggle a bit. Uh, as of lately but uh yeah it is uh, i'm gonna stick around hockey in the future that's for sure i just don't know in what uh, what position what did it mean to you to get to over a thousand games can you believe that you got there like as you, you get drafted into this league seventh overall and you reach that milestone what was that like i think to be surprised i uh to be honest i surprised a lot of people with that because mm-hmm. nobody was expecting that when i entered the league but uh yeah you know i i think it's a big part of my success over the year was that i was never uh, too mentally into it as a, because if you think about every game and after the game, there's so many games throughout the year, and I always kept my head straight, and I you know knew the season was always long, and uh, so I was enjoying every moment on the ice, every single time, practice games. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I think that's why I stick around for so long. You played over 700 games here in Philly. The relationships that you have and like that core you're with Wayne Simmons and Claude Giroux and those guys over the years, that's something that'll never be broken. No, never. It's uh, We just talked about it. I saw a few guys the other night and uh, we're like a family, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, it's only six guys left from that part right mm-hmm. now, but uh, we're like a family and that relationship stays forever. That's what I'm, that's why I played at hockey. That's why I uh, was so into the locker room things and as a team because you keep those memories forever. As a guy and a player in a city like Philadelphia, a big major market, you were incredibly transparent, opinionated, and weren't afraid. You embraced that. Did that was that early in your career when you kind of got to that mode, or did that take time? I think it takes time a little bit. You just gotta find your role into it. And obviously, as more you play and more minutes you play and more hockey games you play, you get that confident. And uh, you know, I think that's one of the reason why I was. You know, eventually traded because uh, you know I was always stating my opinion. Sometimes it was wrong, sometimes it was right. But uh, if I kept my mouth shut, I think I would I would stick around a little longer. Out of all the great memories you have here, you know, in Philadelphia, you know, w- what's some of the things that really stick out to you that you always remember about playing here? Just the attitude we have. I know, you know, like I read stuff, right? So I I know everything what's going on. But like about the leadership or about the locker room or about how we didn't know how to win. We just we were so passionate about the winning games mm-hmm. throughout that time. Even it was hard for us sometimes. 
that mentality of that locker room of sticking together when things go bad. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we always try to find a solution together. And that was the things I'm going to remember forever and uh, the relationships that I had that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. What's next, man? What are you going to do? Uh, what, what's post-hockey Jake Voracek? What's, what's the business venture? Business venture is a couple of things. Uh, I have in, in, in my head. Uh, plus, on, on top of that, sticking around hockey. Mm-hmm. Uh, so eventually, as a coach, I would like to do that because I think, you know, I see the game a little bit differently than uh, than most of the guys. And uh, so we'll see where it's going to get me. Like I said, it's uh, you never know. But uh, if you are honest, uh, you know, work hard, uh, it's going to get you somewhere. Did you play for Torts? I, n- I missed him. I dodged, I dodged what him. What would that have gone like? But you know what? Like, it's I heard so many great things about him mm-hmm. and the way he is. Uh, I think that's exactly what I was looking for, and I like I had it in let's say in uh, Greg Bear Ruby when he was here, mm-hmm. just straight up shooter, doesn't mince words, tell it you know tell honest it how it as is. can be right. That, that's 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 a, what else you looking for? You're looking for a friend. You're looking for the guy that to say it the way it is, and you know try to squeeze the best best out of it as possible. And uh, and uh, from what I heard from the players and from my friends, that that's exactly where he is, and you know you gotta appreciate that. Yeah, no ambiguity on where you stand on anything, and you'll find out in the moment, uh, Jake. Man, thanks for doing this, man. Uh, best of luck in the post career. I always love covering you. I, you're always one of those guys I love talking to because I, I know I was going to get a straight answer and a real answer, not <laughs> four check, back check, and all yeah, that other. Yeah, chip, yeah. chip it in, chip it out, keep it simple, and uh, you know we're going to work hard as a team. <laughs> Jake, best of luck. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. There he is, former Flyer Jake Voracek. Great to see him. And as you noted at the beginning of the interview, he cracks open a cold one right away. Jake Voracek always knew how to have a good time as well. He was a guy that enjoyed being a pro athlete and all the fringe benefits that came with it. So great to see him and best of luck to Jake Voracek and any future endeavors. Um, Real quick, before we get to a couple of emails, I just wanted to point this out. Uh, I thought Morgan Frost in that last game, the Flyers win over Arizona. and, And recently, he is playing his best hockey of the year. I think he is really a confident player. And when he's got that confidence, out comes his creativity. I just looked over his last 22 games. He's got six goals, 12 assists, and 18 points. Uh, but while those are pretty good numbers, I think his play has been even better than the numbers. And you look at the way he is affecting the opponent. He is driving offense, setting up line mates, and in, in the last couple of games in particular, I know Torts talked about this. He looks like a player that wants to be a difference maker. And that is a big thing. Sometimes guys, really good players, you know, what, what, how do they look when the chips are down? Or how do they look when momentum's not with the team and you want to get it back? He looks like a guy that is trying to steal momentum back and control the game all of a sudden. And that is a great sign of development. A lot of young guys, like I've talked about it with Tyson Forster, he needs to be more selfish. He needs to shoot the puck more, not defer to his veteran line mates and go, here, I'll set you up. I'll pass it to you. I'm not going to shoot it because I'm the young guy. He needs to be more selfish. Sometimes young guys, you know, don't take on that role of being a guy that's going to control the game because they defer. It's like the hockey code, but Morgan Frost is taking a step. He had a really good second half of the season last year. Now those games didn't mean much because they were playing out the string, but these games mean a ton. And the fact that he is performing the way he's performing, playing the way he's playing, and the way it looks, I think is a very, very good sign. So just wanted to point that out about Morgan Frost. Uh, Let's get to a couple of emails. Uh, I get this one from John S., He sent this to me on the 11th, so a couple days ago. He said, I think Flyers management needs to focus on keeping this team together. He said the team has something that is rare, contributions from everyone. He said, despite the Carter Hart shakeup, Sam Harrison and even Cal Peterson stepped in to pick up the slack. He said, also, it's not always the same players scoring goals and getting assists. This is not a time to trade away pieces of a team that is working together to get some high price hot dog that once he puts on a Flyers jersey, will stop performing and then go play for someone else. John S. from Long Island. Okay, well, first of all, if you made a trade, if you're trading at the deadline, 
the Flyers would be trading off players and getting assets, either picks or prospects, or maybe a young player that needs to change the scenery, kind of like Owen Tippett did. But so you're not getting some hot dog. They are not going to stand pat. They're going to have an asking price for guys, whether that's Sean Walker, which is going to be a steep asking price, whether that's Nick Sealer. If, if those asking prices cannot be met, then you have to weigh the, the whole equation if you're Danny Briere. Is it worth trading Sean Walker to get a, a third-round pick, say it was? I don't think that's worth it. But there is going to be movement. There, I don't think this team is just going to stand pat and keep this team together. The view, from what I understand, is very much still we are thinking long-term. We are not thinking this April. If this team makes the playoffs and and look, they're in position to do so right now, that's great. But it's not going to alter the plan. The plan still is there. If you want to be a bona fide cup contender, you have to listen on players maybe that are playing well, that are important players to this team. Guys like Sean Walker, you have to listen on them. And there is offers that you may get that you're going to have to take. I don't think that changes. While the team is not broken right now, it is still about a rebuild. So I disagree with John uh, on that email. So thanks for the note, John. Appreciate it. Uh, Kenneth Kirsch shot me an email. We're going through emails in this one. If you want to email me, Jason, J-A-S-O-N, dot Mertitus, M-Y-R-T-E-T-U-S, at gmail.com. Uh, he says, in response to your question the other day regarding how we're feeling about our Flyers, he said, I now live in Georgia, uh, I, so I don't get to all their games. However, over the last past six, uh, six or seven seasons, I purchased the NHL center ice with direct TV. Therefore, I literally have seen north of 90% of every game during this span. He said, how am I feeling? He said, finally, very optimistic. He said, I'm a huge Eagles fan. He actually uses the word gargantuan, which is a nice word. He said, but over the past few years, the Flyers had taken over as my number one Philadelphia sports team. They are playing connected, playing with pace, and seem to enjoy playing not just with, but for each other. As a coach for 20 plus years, playing for each other is something that does not show on a stat line, but is imperative to become a great team. Well, Ken, I agree with you a thousand percent on that. He said, continues on and says, uh, will we make the playoffs? I don't know. He said, but an important aspect that seems to be getting lost by the fan base that the want us to lose portion is the experience this young nucleus is getting playing meaningful games down the stretch. And if this happens to spill into the playoffs, it's just more experience gained. Yes, we're still lacking a few high-end talented players, but that when the Meechkoffs, perhaps Barkies do arrive, the experience they are all gaining now will be a catalyst when we finally do make our cup runs over an extended period of time. As always, love the show and enjoy the rest of the season. Let's go Flyers, Dr. Ken Kirsch. Uh, it's well stated, Ken. I totally agree with you. The experience these players are getting in a very tight playoff race all the chips are down, very little margin for error. You can't cough up games because those two points could be the reason you don't make it. There's a heightened sense of everything. That's game in and game out, period in, period out, shift in, shift out. There's a lot. There's pressure. When you do anything and there's no meaning to it, it's easy to flourish. When you apply a ton of pressure to someone, that's when it's hard to flourish. And if you can go through that now, it's only a positive experience. Will they make the playoffs? I agree. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs. They're in a great position right now. Uh, are they going to see it over the goal line? Are they going to stay healthy? There's a lot of – what is the trade deadline going to do? Who's uh, who's going to be traded? What's the effect of that? I don't know. But I do agree with you, Ken, that this experience in this pressure cooker that they're in is very – beneficial both short and long term and especially to the younger players to players who haven't been to a postseason to guys like Tyson Forster Cam York Jamie Drysdale 
on and on down the line. It's really important for those players to get a taste and playing these meaningful games as well. Huge element of it. Great email. Uh, One more. This comes from Chris Molnar. He says, uh, hey, Jason, your show is fantastic. Thank you, Chris. He said, by far the best Flyers coverage, and we get it every day. Keep up the great work and go Flyers. Uh, That would have been a great email if it was just that, but it's not. He goes on to say, he said, I have a quick question, which you probably get a lot. But where do you get the replica goalie mask you have on the shelf under your Bernie helmet? I'd like to get some of my favorites from the 90s to now. Example being Belfour, uh, Eddie Belfour's Blackhawk mask, a bunch of companies out there. So I wanted to see who you recommend and if you like more one more than the other. Their names would be greatly appreciated. Well, the, the collection that I have behind me, um, there are, I think, one-third scale masks. The Birdie one is full size, but one third scale masks, and they came from two different companies. So there, th- there's a slightly smaller one, which comes from a company from Upper Deck. That's what the box looks like. They put out this collection. This is a collectible mask from 2000, 2000, 2003, and that's this size. This is a little guy. This is the Nikolai Hobby Bulin Tampa Bay Lightning Bulin wall mask, one of my absolute favorite masks. But this is a little guy. It's a little tiny mask. And then the one-third size, uh, that actually came from EA, put this out. And this is what a box would look like, EA Sports. like So EA, it's in the game. And then you get a mask like that. This is one-third size, Patrick Waugh, Montreal Canadian. So it's slightly bigger. You can see the difference in size. Um, These ones are ultra cool. The Brodeur one is is an EA, a Van Beesbrook. I have in the EA size. Also, John Van Beesbrook, Mike Richter. Um, I just found them on eBay um, and searched them out. No company makes new ones now. I don't know if it's some sort of trademark or anything like that. I'd love to see updated masks uh, of newer masks and be able to get replicas like this. But there's also companies out there that do like custom replicas and stuff like that on plastic or on actual like a regular like a mask would be. Um like molded and everything like that. So you just got to look for those. But the two are Upper Deck and EA, and your best bet to find those is on eBay. So good question as well. I am a big fan of the goalie mask, and this is an ultra cool one, even though he's coaching the New York Islanders at the minute. All right, everybody, that's a brand new Flyers Daily. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow for another brand new episode. Join us then on Flyers Daily.